Students, I am Dr. Tanma Vishwasar. Welcome you all in my channel, Chemistry: The Mystery of Molecules. So today we shall discuss a very interesting topic: how to prepare this hexafluorobenzene. This compound has many application. For example, it's a standard of F19 NMR, or it could be standard in 13C NMR. Uh, because there is no proton, so in proton NMR you will not get any signal. Not only that, it will be used in solvent in UV visible spectroscopy because it doesn't absorb in the UV region. So consequently, this molecule has lots of application. So our today's discussion is how to prepare this molecule in one step or two step. What do I mean by one step? One step means you may consider like that. A fluorine and a Lewis acid like aluminium three plus that is aromatic electrophilic substitution using fluorine as halogen. So why we means actually we don't do this. Why we don't do this and why we follow the second pathway where in an intermediate is produced. Now if we look at little carefully, why don't we use this fluorine and aluminium three plus? Remember, fluorine is very reactive so this is actually very reactive if a compound is very reactive consequently it is less selective so from organic chemistry point of view you can say that such molecules are very difficult to handle since its extreme reactivity there is an another point also that is hazard so whoever will deal this instrument or work with this they have their life safety second thing instrument safety because due because of its extreme reactivity is almost react with everything consequently it is very difficult to control its reactivity and selectivity and has that associated with this process so that's why although we prefer that one step reactions are always better but because of the, all these obstacles we will prefer the two step process now question what is the two step what is the intermediate used for this preparation so we understood what is the advantage and disadvantage now the question mark compound is this is hexachlorobenzene okay so if you treat this hexachlorobenzene with potassium fluoride what will happen it potassium chloride uh, react in presence of nmp this is n methyl 2 pyrolidone so it's like that this solvent uniqueness of this solvent is it's a very highly polar aprotic solvent and this is aprotic because of its canonical form you can see this so this is a very high polar aprotic solvent and its boiling point is very high so that is the advantage of this chemical okay so this is the uh, thing why it's highly polar because of this canonical form understood second see this is a 500 degree centigrade it's boiling point near about 210 like that so you can ask that sir how 500 degree this is inside a autoclave so a autoclave is a place it's a closed system in inside which you can increase the temperature based on your desire but you need to keep the safety points in your mind how much you can go it everything will depend on the setup and the material used for the setup now second thing so in this way it produces this hexafluorobenzene now question what type of reaction it is first of all this is you may consider aromatic nucleophilic substitution okay i have already discussed in details so you may visit so now how this reaction happens this fluorine act as nucleophile so it act as nucleophile means means this fluoride you may consider this fluoride can attack so what will happen if fluoride attacks then charge will go to the adjacent and another thing you remember for example let me draw the intermediate here one intermediate so this is the negative charge and so these all are halogen now this is the fluoride and there is another chloride so this negative charge could be stabilized by the minus i effect of chlorine additionally there are vacant d orbital available in chlorine which can also help to stabilize this negative charge third thing this negative charge is delocalized over the nucleus and many chlorine atoms are present so that's why it could be stabilized and in the next step chlorine can leave why because if you look at the bonding between fluorine and carbon we know that halogen have three lone pair of electron so this now this lone pair of electron could be delocalized within the ring and consequently this carbon halogen bonds whatever we say they are partial double bond 
okay partial double bond now you can say that said okay there are four bonds means fluorine chlorine bromine iodine which bond is more stable so this is fluorine is second row chlorine is third row bromine is fourth row and iodine is fifth row consequently you can say that this and carbon is also a second row consequently the bonding between carbon fluorine is more and back bonding this is actually a back bonding lone pair delocalization into the benzene ring this back bonding will be maximum in place of carbon fluorine and carbon fluorine bond single bond is one of the strongest covalent bond so consequently so this is a stable bond forming from a unstable bond this is a point number one and at the end there will be a kcl so that's a stable salt so that is the driving force for this reaction and this reaction this example is taken from this reference presented here now we understood how the reaction happened to produce this hexachlorobenzene derivative but question did we start it from benzene obviously not we have started from c6 cl6 means hexachlorobenzene question how to get hexachlorobenzene because we need to start from benzene so how to prepare benzene to hexachlorobenzene this is via reaction of chlorine with anhydrous alcl3 just remember sometime before I, I was telling these aluminium 3 plus act as a lewis acid and this reaction is nothing but aromatic electrophilic substitution consequently in this process it produces this hexachlorobenzene and you may consider that this AlCl3 plus Lewis acid helps to stabilize the Cl minus produced after this reaction. And actually, better to say, in this case, after reaction, what it produces? It produces 6 HCl because 6 protons in the benzene, benzene is C6H6, is substituted by 6 chlorine atoms. So that's why 6 HCl will be produced, and this AlCl3 plus anhydrous AlCl3 plus is absorbed this chloride minus such that reaction can proceed further. Now, if you look at the condition a little closely, this reaction is carried out under this dark and cold condition. This is mild, this is pretty mild condition. Okay. So now question may happen that the benzene to chlorobenzene or dichlorobenzene or trichlorobenzene we are getting and we are doing the reaction under that much milder condition so is halogens are activating or deactivating actually because we know the halogens are very highly electron withdrawing so we, we expected that this reaction condition demands a dusty condition because after addition of first chlorine the electron density should decrease second will further third will further in this way so if you go for further and further polyhalogenated benzene derivative the condition demand for the reaction condition should be harsh but this is not student remember one statement that halogens are ortho para orienting halogens are ortho para orienting and deactivating i have already discussed this thing previously so you may visit for further understanding so halogens are ortho para orienting and deactivating that's why under this milder reaction condition this dark cold this product we can get now parallel to this question i would request you student please remember one another information you should not get confused see if you react this benzene in terms of excess remember this this both are excess okay so this both are excess so excess chlorine if you react in presence of H nu and heat means under light irradiation you will get hexachlorocyclohexane okay so in this case difference is that first case C6 H6 second case C6 sorry first case C6 Cl6 in the second case C6 H6 Cl6 so first is the substitution reaction okay first is the substitution reaction and the second is addition reaction so please don't get confused and i guess in this way you can remember these two things easily so from this thing we understood how benzene is converted into hexachlorobenzene and then through aromatic nucleophilic substitution type reaction this hexachlorobenzene is converted into hexafluorobenzene okay so this is the end of the discussion thanks for watching if you enjoy my teaching please like comment share and subscribe my channel chemistry the mystery of molecules so stay happy stay blessed see you in my next video